So, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good night, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, you're very welcome uh, to uh, the next section of our ongoing ramble. Uh, today I'm on the, uh, the ridgeway where it connects to the official current day designation of where the Grim's Ditch starts is uh, just uh, along the banks of the of the Thames which is kind of down beyond these fields there. Uh, the Grim's Ditch starts here as it were uh, close to Wallingford uh, just on the uh, outskirts of Mongewell which is a tiny village uh, most famous I guess for the old Jewish college that used to be here and uh, uh, some very illustrious successful people have been educated here uh, most noticeably a chap I can't remember his name Ooh, I'm gonna flash it up on the screen uh, but uh, he went to this school and uh, I actually know someone who worked for him when he was running top shop fine um, the path goes under this road that surrounds Wallingford and of course I love the graffiti uh, the, the inevitable uh, uh, marks that human beings uh, make uh, on their environment and Grimm's Ditch starts just up here on the left and um, uh, it uh, actually has its own signpost and uh, it's quite lovely really uh, but it's kind of this little secret path that goes along the road there any which way today we are going to talk about um, 9, 11. 11th of September 2001 we had one of the singular most defining events in modern history uh, when two planes went into the World Trade Center towers uh, one plane went into uh, the Pentagon and uh, this is now 21 years ago and 21 years ago our world was put on its ear uh, we, the world was put on its arse uh, because everything changed then we we obviously had issues uh, with the Middle East but from that point 2001 the governments around the world uh, in boldened themselves to put in security measures that never got lifted uh, there are greater experts than me uh, who can tell you what these things mean uh, but the Patriot Act and airport security and uh, counter-terrorism measures uh, were uh, things that seemed to be so sensible and obvious and these measures were put in place and here we are 21 years later and they have become totally matter of course uh, something that we take for granted something that we no longer see and and why then is 9-11 something that I want to talk about in the context of things that make people go hmm uh, as, as you know all scientific discovery starts with a scientist uh, a person observing something and saying hmm that doesn't make any sense now I remember being there when the 9-11 event was happening and I watched it during the course of a day and I was actually there seeing the news reporting on these two these two uh, planes and, and capturing them on film and uh, 
I was 41 years old and it was very plain to see that the world would never be the same because this was an unimaginable event that was hard to believe was happening in real time before us. And uh, why is it an event that pe make people go, hmm? Why is this an event that when you speak to people who are in some sort of uh, truther movement, if, if you speak to people who are notionally awake, what is it that makes them go, hmm? Well, it starts with the World Trade Centers, two great big towers uh, that were taken down by airplanes flying into them. And of course, the footage that we've all seen uh, have become iconic. Yet, what, what has become less iconic is Building 7, uh, a, a building that was nearby that also collapsed. So you have a situation there where you have three buildings, two airplanes. Hmm. The incident has been analysed by many, but then if you look at the Pentagon, um, as far as we can see, there was no airplane because CCTV footage at the time, um, hauntingly and bizarrely, failed to capture the last moment when the airplane went into the building. Uh, the debris that was left uh, outside the great big hole in the wall um, was almost non-existent. Uh, in fact, it was a miracle that they were able to find passports, uh, and I believe they, they found passports both uh, at the Twin Towers as well as the Pentagon. I have taken a slight detour and I walked into the park of the Carmel College, the, the Jewish college that I told you about, and, and these are the sort of the old grounds, and we are heading for a little abandoned chapel uh, that I often visit. visit. Uh, and when I say abandoned, it's, it's, it's almost a ruin, but it's still maintained, and it is kind of Again, utterly, utterly charming. And there is a sense that there is a Holy Spirit here. There is a sense that this is not just bricks and mortar and flint and cobbles, uh, but that there actually is a sense that this is alive with some sort of spirit. Well, that's, that's my, that's my uh, belief and proud of it. But if you look at the approach to it, this is the St. John Church in Mongewell. And, uh, it is rather mysterious and charming, uh, nestled amongst ancient, uh, very old yew trees, and uh, uh, some something that I'm always approaching with a not a serious demeanour, as it were, but, but but sort of more. I approach this building always with sincerity and uh, with a with a sincere heart. Uh, like I said, there is kind of something going on here. And I think it's utterly bewildering how beautiful it is as you walk through this path that is almost not there in these ancient headstones. And again, the trees. And through the trees, you can sometimes glimpse the the Thames uh, down beyond there and uh, it is absolutely a magical setting there you go there's there's the Thames and uh, it is kind of just uh, a, a privilege to be able to come here when you then look at the the building it is a ruin because the old archway here leads into what would have been the main what do you call it the main hall the main building uh, where at one time that bell tower there would have been at the 
end of a hall covered in oak timbers leading to the the nave at the end and generously this is kept and is kept open to the public uh, so St John the Baptist Monjuel uh, part of the Church Preservation Trust this is a historic church no longer used for regular worship but it remains consecrated that was the word I was looking for the other day and, and open to all and it opens up into this utterly charming room nave I guess and it is striking how this was crafted and the artisanship and the sponsorship of wealthy families leaves its remains today and I will sit here and my dog goes very impatient with me and I'll sit here and have a look at the the front of the church and at the back of the church of course there's the old font uh, and the stone coins framing the windows uh, the memorial pieces of human aspirations remaining uh, the scriptures on the wall all of it con conjures a, a story of, of humanity's frailty and its, its desire to be remembered and live on I'm always really struck by this little bit of uh, I believe it's Norman uh, carving around this great big arch and it is just absolutely beautiful so come here well I come here and I, I and I sit and uh, it's quiet and it's still for one you can hear my patient little dog in the background who wants nothing more but for the walk to continue uh, but she's she's been here a few times with me and uh, uh, I just I just sit here and, and I, I regard the stained glass uh, in front of me and uh, Jesus Rex Christos Rex um, the, the king and kind of have a little chi a quiet chat and uh, what I uh, more than anything I try to do is like I kind of try to still my beating heart and I try to still my chattering monkey brain and I kind of just sit here and feel and listen and collect myself and uh, get to this place where I can reconnect with that part of me that is not verbal that is not a chattering monkey uh, that is not this great big verbal diatribe but the, the, the stillness inside and, and I, I genuinely I, I genuinely do believe that God is inside me and uh, uh, yeah, your God is inside you and I don't think we have to look to outside authorities for uh, guidance I think we can look inside uh, and, and I think we can get all the answers uh, that we could possibly need uh, from, from a quiet moment with ourselves and with our maker. So um, I'm very, very pleased to be able to share with you uh, St. John the Baptist's church in Monjuel um, because you need to find your little refuges for, for yourself and, and, the, and the places where you can be still and where you can be quiet and where you can regroup because the bombardment is relentless uh, the, 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 the sense that we are constantly kept off balance is that sense is very tangible to me and many people and, and it's kind of like the fear porn and the fear mongering and, and, and the constant onslaught on us of bang 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 it is designed to stop us being still stop us being quiet stop us connecting to our to our maker 
Now, if I sit here and, and I think about this video that I've started, uh, I want to talk to you about 9-11, and all I have to do is quieten down and consider what do I want to achieve, and what do I want to share, uh, and, and kindly give me the words to help me do that. So, this is not a 9-11 truther video, but what it is, is a video where my sense is that there's an awful lot more going on than meets the eye with 9-11, or that, in fact, I guess the more accurate way to say that is there's a narrative that we've been asked to accept, and there's a narrative that... Uh, is that this was uh, a, an act of malicious terrorism and I guess it was but I think the perpetrators are not who we were told it was uh, yeah. the there is so much anomaly surrounding 9-11 two airplanes three buildings. Uh, Penta Pentagon, no airplane. And just on the morning of a reveal of where 55 billion, I can't remember the exact number, but there was a budgetary issue around the Pentagon's, Pentagon's uh, Black Ops budget, as it were, or uh, a budget. And because of the uh, malicious attack of uh, Al-Qaeda they never had to present anything they couldn't because all the records were destroyed oh. funny that um, if you look into what engineers say about 9-11 and how those two towers came down it is a simple case of controlled demolition uh, there are videos uh, circulating on the internet uh, showing how the floors were blown out boom 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 and there are uh, there's evidence of how the steel structure had been cut uh, on a diagonal on a uh, uh, on diagonal cuts all across this structure to make it fall down within its own footprint two towers randomly and there's an awful lot of analysis going into it saying that, well, actually, two airplanes couldn't have brought that uh, structure down because it was a monumental steel structure designed to withstand that exact thing. And, by the way, uh, aviation fuel doesn't burn at the temperatures required to create molten steel. So... There, there's so much there that this video, I'm, I'm not going to go into it. Uh, if, if you've come across this before and have not felt compelled to research, maybe a nagging feeling that something was not all right with that, then by all means you must. Because when you scratch the surface of that one, that opens up a bleeding wound where you cannot doubt that there is foul play. You cannot doubt that we are talking about a false flag event that is boggling in its scope. Now I'm going to carry on here uh, on the Ridgeway and walk in the direction of South Stoke uh, uh, through, cutting through the the Springs Golf Course, uh, but uh, I mean, who, kn who knows where the paths actually led here uh, 3,000 years ago, and what was Grim's Ditch and what we call Grim's Ditch and what wasn't. Uh, it's very, very possible that this was all connected. I don't know if it was or, or not. So, notionally, 
notionally 9-11 was a false flag event except that was the premise so who did it and why well if you if you dig into the al-qaeda and if you dig into CIA's involvement in that organization and Osama bin Laden and in his relationship to the powers that be um, then it's all starting to smell if you look into the ownership of the towers and the insurance policies uh, that were uh, changed and applied for and and redefined as to include acts of terrorism um, a very short period of time before 9-11 then all of that starts to smell if you look at some of the almost legendary videos on YouTube of how President Bush uh, is surrounded by children had an appearance he was doing in a school somewhere and it's, it's just mm -hmm, all is not well in the land of Denmark um, so if we accept notionally like I say that this is some sort of false flag event then what opens up from that is almost crazy uh, or certainly crazy making um, the idea that elected leaders could fabricate an event that kills thousands of their own citizens is too much for an empathic human being to process uh, if you if you consider the impact and the effect of that beyond the shores of America in how this event singularly enabled a a war on terror and a further expansion of the perpetrators military strength in the Middle Eastern region if you look at the impact of destabilizing those countries of drone strikes of ceaseless and endless war for the last 21 years <laughs> uh, and uh, Thank you. all right and um, the it becomes too hard to to process and, and this is why I think that even though for the last 21 years I may have come across this conspiracy theory many times um, it was almost too big for my brain and my understanding and participation of the world to participate with um, because if you accept that that notion is true as a thought experiment where that takes you is to very dark places because suddenly every bit of narrative that has been pushed into your brain for your entire life starts to crumble the bastion of the free world is the leader of the free world is a despot he is an assassin he is a killer he is a liar he is not human because the the problem that we have when we are empathic human beings is we cannot process what a psychopath is capable of doing because our check and our checks and balances that balances internally when we are connected to our heart when we're connected to our empathy it doesn't allow us to do things that a psychopath who is not connected 
to his heart and his empathy, is able to do without even breaking a sweat. Oh, this is a bit of a find for a Fletcher. This is a, a, a kite, a red kite feather that will make a lovely fletching for some arrows that I'm knocking up. So that's the problem with 911 is as far as I can work out and far better brains than me have done this both on an engineering side, on a policing side, on an arson side, on a uh, construction side, far be better brains than mine have analysed this and come to the conclusion that this was a false flag event that was perpetrated on the American public by the American leadership. <clears throat> and that then opens up a whole bag of words, worms. Now, if some of you people watching this, for instance, if some of, the, of you people watching this are my friends or my family, you will think that I have, Dan has now finally lost it uh, because their world view is right in the middle of the narrative cage that his, has been slowly woven around them and these two years of this COVID nonsense and these two years of being locked down and these two years for me and for many other people have started us on a, a journey down a rabbit hole where 9-11 is not the biggest thing that they've hidden from us. Uh, there are bigger secrets, there are bigger truths, there are bigger lies that have been kept from us. Well, well, lies, truths, yeah, you, you know what I mean. There are much bigger truths waiting to be uncovered as you go, start to go down this rabbit hole. And, and, I, and I caution, uh, abandon hope all ye that enter here because this rabbit hole is deeper than Dante ever imagined. Uh, this rabbit hole uh, leads to a place and it's only when you get through it that you discover hope again uh, because I don't know how to say this uh, without sounding like a melodramatic jerk. Um, some of this stuff is dark and uh, I urge and encourage you to go do a search on 9-11. Observe how much counter information and how much, uh, you, know, you, know, you know when you have the films like Top Gun uh, and a missile strike is about to go into the plane and they fire off flak to distract the missile and to take out the flak instead of the plane. The truth of 9-11 is surrounded by so much flak, it'll make your head spin. But you're an intelligent person, you have all of the resources in the world, and you have maybe some time, look into it and make your own mind up. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sharing a, uh, a video here where I have uh, the factual answers. I'm telling you that I've looked at uh, all of the information out there from misinformation through to uh, factual information uh, through to idiots information and I've come to the conclusion that actually there is something that's been hidden from us that is extraordinary. Because here's, here's where that notion goes. You have a political machine that is disconnected from its stated mission to represent its people and do the best for them. And what you instead have is a self-serving elite that represents forces that have no limits to what they can do. So when when, 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 when you verbalise something about COVID and 
uh, the jab strategies. Yes, but why would they do that? Dan, honestly, do you really think there is so much malice? And the truth of the matter is, I do. The truth of the matter is, it's incontrovertible now that there are players on this field who have no limits. Now, I've come across psychopathy. I, I've had to deal with narcissistic psychopaths. And the most challenging and bewildering thing is this, this thing that I mentioned before. They have no limits. The way that you have limits and things that you would not do, they don't have. Uh, they literally have objectives. They tend to have relentless energy to plot and scheme and plot and scheme to further those objectives. And their rational mind, their rational mind comes up with a strategy. And um, to the best of my understanding and the best metaphor I know, because they're disconnected from their heart, they have no compulsion about following the rational lies. They rationalize everything. And that's what gives them no limits. The end, in every aspect of fulfilling and achieving their goals, justifies the means. Uh, because uh, they say things like, it's not personal, Dan, it's just business. As if that was a thing. It's all personal. But they manage to tell themselves a rational lie. Yeah, it's unfortunate that 3,000 uh, people died in 9-11, but look what it achieved for us. Look how it consolidated our place in the world, blah, 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 whatever rational lies they tell themselves. And this is, this is the danger that the psychopaths have been in charge of spell weaving, spell casting, broadcasting those spells uh, into fundamentally an empathic audience uh, that has that has acquiesced to the weave that they wove and now find it almost incomprehensible to think that someone would do that but the evidence is starting to become clear they are doing things that no empathic caring human being would do uh, and I think uh, our system, uh, our system favours brutal, brutal, thoughtless, no not thoughtless, uh, brutal, uh, ruthless, they, they have no ruse, uh, psychopathy uh, in a way that empathy doesn't win that game. Because frankly, you get to a stage, if you're an empath, when you think, yeah, well actually, all that money doesn't matter that much. <coughs> and we don't relentlessly pursue it. Um, Monopoly, the game, is the metaphor for how all of that works, uh, which is the psychopaths brutally and relentlessly pursue getting Mayfair and the Strand. And once they do, they win the game. And instead of making everyone bankrupt, they set up everyone to have a mortgage. They set everyone to be a wage slave so that instead of the game ending, they enslave the other players on the board so that the game can carry on until they own the entire board and everything that's on it. And then I, I don't know what the next stage of that plan is, but uh, that's something that we'll explore going forward. So, um, I don't know if I'm at the conclusion here yet or not, but I'm still walking, and I guess that this long form uh, ramble um, uh, is because I take my dog for a walk, and, uh, and a walk takes half an hour, uh, 45 minutes, an hour, and I keep thinking of things to say, so it is what it is. Uh, so sorry about that. So, going back then to 9-11, if our leaders are capable of doing that 
what else are they capable of? Would they be capable of starting and funding a war, uh, placing bets on both sides? Would they be capable of funding political party candidates so that you think you're voting left or you think you're voting right, but you're basically voting for two put-up candidates that were sponsored by the same people? You decide. Uh, what are they not capable of? Well, they're not capable of connecting to positive energy, creativity, spirit. And, and that is still a thing. That is why I take you into these churches. That is why uh, we talk about some of these things. I need, I hope to remind you of that truth. Uh, the reason that these podcasts are not crash bang wallop and um, the most emergency incentivizing exclamation mark ridden headline is because I don't want it to be that. I don't want to engage your amygdala and your, and your panic and your adrenaline. I want to connect with your heart. And we do that through a more quiet pace. We do that through a more contemplative approach. And we do that through sharing some of the things that are around me as I walk along. We shall be heading down to the river now. And we shall sit for a minute and watch the waters flow by. And it is rather nice because it kind of just suddenly opens up. And it turns into a different landscape where the Thames River, the old archery of South England, suddenly shows its nature and the landscape changes. And I imagine walking down Grimm's Ditch, uh, it would be a welcome sight and it would be a, a landmark where you'd have to search out and try to find the crossing points where you can get across this body of water and where a bridge is created, like in Wallingford it's now in, indeed. And you saw my dog get very excited about chasing a heron and the heron must, must be a bit more pissed off. But it is rather nice. So you come down to the river and you're reminded of all the Zen koans you ever, uh, you ever uh, heard. Um, Buddhist sayings, wisdom. The water flows and it goes from the hills down to the sea and it keeps moving. It's relentless and we are on a journey like that. And we can't step into the same river twice. At the moment, from my perspective, I'm trying to give you a, a feeling and a, and a view on where and what a river at the moment looks like. And if I do a good job, I will give you a perspective and a view that's, that is useful or that is, has utility. And uh, maybe to, to some extent even a little bit beautiful. And if nothing else, a bit of fun. Uh, and there's my little dog enjoying a stick, like I told you about. Uh, we're at a clearing where someone is doing stewardship. They're looking after the land and uh, uh, dealing with windfalls and old sick trees, no doubt, and uh, uh, clearing them up. And, and, and that is, of course, our role as stewards. We're supposed to be... We're supposed to be building things up. We're supposed to be protecting. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be caretakers, nourishers, builders, uh, caregivers. Um, we're supposed to be people that look after the weak, not oppress them. And this is the difference. Um, a psychopath gets very excited about weak people because there's less, there's less chance that they will resist and so a psychopath tries to make us weak uh, and I think
that's something that we can see as well that our diet and our lifestyle has created a wave of obesity because if we are someone's enemy that enemy is trying to make us weak it is I don't know I think it's trying to feed us on soya protein and estrogen and complex carbohydrates uh, so that we are weak it's trying to erode and damage the ties between people uh, it's trying to do divide and conquer uh, it is trying to set man against woman woman against trance trance against everyone uh, politicians against the world all of us are encouraged and invited to take a side in some arbitrary war and I think we need to remind ourselves who the enemy is uh, the enemy is not your brother and sister the enemy is not uh, your family the, en en the enemy is not the different generation the enemy is the perpetrators and sponsors and funders and brains behind the attack on 9-11 it's the forces behind the regulatory capture of big pharma it's the forces that while you are buying cryptocurrencies and digital assets they are buying farmland um, that's the real enemy and while we fight the battle on their terms on their platforms don't be surprised if they have an advantage uh, but the power that we have is that we can connect to each other heart to heart uh, we can connect to each other with a hug psychopaths tend to flinch when you try to hug them they don't like that uh, opportunity for two hearts to connect because they don't know what to do with it they don't know how to manipulate it they don't know how to control it so we have power we have strength we have tools we can use that we are using and here's the thing it's not difficult trust your instincts trust your gut feeling trust your heart trust your passion trust your inspiration it will not lead you astray even when it feels overwhelming so that was my little walk with you today uh, on potentially what was part of Grimsditch but certainly was the Ridgeway and down to the River Thames, Thames where my dog is very much enjoying uh, hanging out and splashing about a bit uh, and, and I hope that you've enjoyed I hope that you've enjoyed this talk and uh, look forward to speak to you uh, look forward to speaking with you again about the next topic of our exploration.